In part three, we looked at how gaze and attention are related. Here, we'll get a quick overview of the human limitations on sensation and perception, starting with focused attention. The common sense view on focused attention is that it's whatever we see. The reality is, it's nowhere near what we see. Focused attention is around two degrees of the visual field, or about the size of your thumbnail at arm's length. Try this experiment. Get a book or a magazine and focus on the first letter of a word in a line. Without taking your eyes off of that letter, see how far across the page you can read. Chances are you didn't get past the next two or three letters. Your ability for detailed vision was locked in place. To compensate, we can switch the foveal view to a new target. That's divided attention, which we saw in part five. But for divided attention to work, you'll need to fix the gaze for 100 milliseconds or longer. It's not much, but it is measurable time. Now we'll consider what happens during the switch between fixations. This is called a saccade, and the data between the fixation points is not available to perception. Here, the red number three has to watch the blue player with the ball and red number two, who's overmatched by his immediate opponent. Three must divide his attention between these two workspaces. While scanning between the ball and number two, three is not directly accessing the data flow. That would require fixating on a new target. Instead, this area is just a fog. During a saccade, Light continues to enter the visual system, but the hardware necessary for processing, the fovea, can't access it. It's our peripheral vision that's at work. For volume, peripheral vision dominates the visual field. It is especially sensitive to motion, but lacks clarity. It surrounds foveal vision and provides us with our global view of the scene. Our foveal and peripheral vision combine as the main hardware components of our visual data gathering system. But hardware needs software to work. In the OODA loop, we can find three components in orientation that fills this role. The relationship between genetic heritage and the visual system hardware is obvious. The relation between genetic heritage and decision making is less so. Here, blue number one's target is too far away the system doesn't work. When help arrives, a new system overrides his physical limitations and changes how he sees the game. Cultural traditions represent the shared implicit way that people see the world around them and act in an evolving environment. It is the starting point for the group in problem solving and places constraints on the individual. Our previous experience can be a help or a hindrance depending on the context. When we have been there, done that, we enjoy an advantage. When we have no idea what's happening, we become a liability. This short overview of visual sensation and perception deals primarily with objects and locations. But keep in mind that as data, what is rapidly becomes what was, and an appreciation of what might be the probabilities is essential to planning and getting ahead of your opponent. Yeah.